Hello internet, my name is Tally Essin. And I'm Evertel. And welcome to the Weekly Reset live. Well, not live, not but live. recorded. Recorded but in. in situ, on location, yes. in Anaheim, California, Heck USA. Yeah. USA. What are we doing in USA. Anaheim? It's a bit out of the way, isn't it? Uh, we're cheering on esports teams. Are we? Is that yes. what we're doing? We did cheer on esports teams for about 50 seconds in the whole of it. But where are we? What are we doing? We're at BlizzCon. BlizzCon 2018. Now, as we record this, BlizzCon 2018 is over. It's done. We've already put a couple of videos over uh, on a couple of subjects that we, we really wanted to talk about individually. Mm -hmm. But this is the weekly reset. Oh, yeah. And that was our opening skit. Well, Welcome. Maybe you could have imagined that I was dressed as Ian, you were dressed as Law. Yeah. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it hilarious. Yeah. And now we're into the new section of the weekly reset. <laughs> Obviously, this is as much as we can do uh, while we're in BlizzCon in our hotel room. Um, yeah. And we're going to give you the lowdown on everything that's happened in our trip to BlizzCon. All of the news that we saw with our own eyes. <laughs> all of the events, all of the happenings, all of the controversy. Oh, all of it. We're going to try and keep our controversy to World of Warcraft because we all know what the big controversy obviously was, but we're a World of Warcraft channel. Uh, Warcraft franchise channel, let's yeah, put it that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, anything else is neither here nor there. Exactly. I don't necessarily really even care about it. Yeah. And if you want to get angry about that, uh, that's absolutely awesome. Go for it. Don't at me. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about um, mostly the things we saw with our own eyes, because we've been really lucky here at BlizzCon. We've yeah. seen loads of stuff. We've talked with loads of people. We've still got a dev interview coming up, uh, which we'll release as a separate video. Um, we still want to do, like, the proper deep dive into the cinematics which will be separate videos as, as well we do. that might have to wait till we get home um, and but this is going to be our story of blizzcon going through the news giving our opinions on it and telling you what you should think because what are youtubers for otherwise eh uh, exactly nothing. literally Merchandise. nothing no. <laughs> check out gear store <laughs> below Click a like, smash the like button, smash that check like out button. the gear store, smash get that the gear Merc, store. get the Merc, not this Merc though, get <laughs> our Merc, yeah. um, and lo, we are excellent YouTubers. We did it. Fantastic. <laughs> Can't wait for all the money. So we got here um, a couple of days in advance. We uh, did. Uh, thank goodness, because we come all the way from the UK, oh my God. Uh, and it takes about a 10 hour sleep. Um, to really get back in the swing of things. Yes. Well, I mean, I usually need a 10 hour sleep anyway. That's true, but <laughs> it has to be a very specifically placed 10 hour sleep. Yes, it does. Uh, when, you, when you've just lost eight hours yeah. uh, coming from the yeah. UK yeah. Um, to... Or do we gain, out, we gain we, eight we hours? We gain eight hours, but it's still it's confusing. It basically means you have to then stay up an extra eight hours to kind of make up for it yes. and, and go to bed at the right time. Yeah, so we did, the right we did time. that. We got in on Wednesday and we got to the airport and we got to our hotel and then we went straight to dinner. <laughs> we did. And we stayed out at dinner um, with some of the best people we know. Um, and it was fantastic. We had a really great time. Yeah. And then we just crashed. Yeah. And we were kind of crashing at the end of the dinner. Yeah. We were like, thanks yeah. for a lovely evening. Thank you. This has been really great. <sighs> Good night. Um, and we slept, and then we were all ready for the day ahead. Picking yeah. up our badges, going to the Merc store. Did yeah. you buy any Merc this year? I didn't. No, me neither. Do you want to know why? Because we didn't have time. No, because I didn't want to take it back on the plane. Oh, we yeah. We had plenty of time. Don't make excuses. You know, they sell those giant bags of stuff, oh. and you see everyone literally with bags the size of their bodies full of cool goodies and stuff. And we didn't get anything this year, but we are probably going to get something. We're going to have to get something online, delivered, yeah, yeah. because there is plenty of stuff that I want there. But we did this last year. We got really excited because the, the place where you go and pick up your badges mm -hmm. um, is the exact same place as the gear store. It's yeah. very sneaky. And it's you have to walk so past the gear sneaky. store to get your badges. Yeah, and then you're like, huh, yeah. is that a queue I should join? Hmm. And we're lucky because we're press, obviously. So we had a very short queue we to get no our badges, queue. and we had all this time then. Yeah, we're like we've basically got all day now. Oh what are we gonna do? And we looked at all the gear, and we, like, and we remembered last year where we got really excited. We queued up, we bought loads of stuff like posters and plushies and Murloc onesies oh. and things like that. And it came in this amazing big bag. Ah, oh, they're such good bags. Oh, and we were so excited. We we're like, look at our big bag. This is amazing. We're gonna have no troubles at all. I'm so glad we went to the Merc store. And then, of course, we went to the airport and tried to get on a plane, and we were like, ah, oh, shit. Man, what are we going to oh, do with this? Oh, yeah. And it was a real pain in the ass. So we avoided that this we year. We did. We were, we were very, very good, clever. Very but good. But there will be... Th what are you going to buy when we get home? I'm actually probably going to buy one of those cute little, like, Horde and Alliance, like, tie-up t-shirts. They're kind of nice. cute. That's I'm usually nasty. not into that kind of thing, but I can 
I really want the Daughter of the Sea art like collection oh, yeah, that looks sort of so pack good. with like all the individual art and yeah. stuff in it as well. Ah oh, man, it looks great. But then on the Thursday evening before BlizzCon started, we uh, went to Com Before the Storm mm-hmm. and we uh, had um, a huge signing um, with awesome people like Terran Gregory and Diva Marie and Fabelina and, and Hazel Blizzard Nutty Watch Games. and Hazelnutty Games. Hazelnutty Games, who we were sat next to. We for couldn't even say hello over to. an hour, um, and we were both so busy with signings and meeting yeah. amazing people that yeah. we didn't even say hello to each other. Well, so hello, hey. Hazel. Hey, I'm sorry about that. We did meet up later. We on, did, so yeah. It was yeah okay. So it's okay. Um, and that was amazing. And then we scooted over from there, and there's there so many brilliant people there. We didn't even get to see, even though we stayed half an hour longer. Oh, I know. We didn't get to see everyone in the queue at the <gasps> come before the storm. And I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, we luckily we managed to catch up with most of you yeah. over the weekend, but um, that won't happen again. If we do it again next year. We'll yeah. be much cleverer about it. We'll but then our own party we did manage year. to meet some more people at the Wowhead signing yeah, again. We, did that. we stayed about half an hour longer at that than we should have done as well until they literally had to throw us off a table. Yep. And then we stood at the side of the table meeting people. Um, and it was just that's what BlizzCon is all about, isn't it? It, like, it is. Meeting people, saying hello to people, chilling out with people, talking wow, talking Blizzard, talking all the cool stuff. And then, oh, okay, that was the intro. That yeah. was the intro. Now we're going to do some intro. proper YouTubing. Yeah. Now we're going to do some proper talking and analyzing. BlizzCon. BlizzCon day one. So, we did it right this year. We did. We got there early. We got there so early. Because last year, we didn't know what it was all about, really. Yeah, and yeah. we were chilling out, and we were eating breakfast, and we were starting to get emails from people going, hey guys, are you, uh, are you actually coming to the opening we're ceremony? Like, and we were like, well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't start till 11. It's only like half 10 now. Why do we, why do we need to be there now? What's going on? And obviously... Uh, there would have been no space left for us at all last year if cool people like Sharku hadn't kept a seat. I know. Um, which we then waltzed into like nothing had even happened. But we wouldn't have anyone looking after us this year. Exactly. So we were up. We were some of the first people in the press queue. We were. Actually, there was only about like 10 or 11 people ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was awesome. And it was a sunny day. It was brilliant. And we decided that we were actually going to watch the opening ceremony from the World of Warcraft stage. Yeah. So we got in right when the doors opened and got front row seats at the Warcraft front stage. Front and centre. Right front and centre. and Terpster. Yeah. Um, and the other Yogscast guys yep. just sitting there chilling out ready for it because we had a tip off yes. Terpster had actually tipped us off because we were going to go to the epic stage the, the sorry mythic the mythic stage, stage. And um, we are like, yeah, that's where we can go. That's where you go to watch the opening ceremony, isn't it? That's where one goes. That's where Morheim's going to be. Yeah. That's where I want to be. Yeah. Because if it, I want to catch his tears <laughs> when he cries, because it's his last ever, like, BlizzCon being Morheim thing. Yeah. I want to catch his tears in a goblet. Yeah. And, and drink them. I, I, I'd rather, like, keep them and maybe, hopefully, one day, grow more Mike Morheims. <laughs> I'm sure Blizzard are already running. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm they're sure on there's, that one. there's probably a few vats with Morheim, <laughs> general like various degrees of Morheim <laughs> aging, like <laughs> happening, like ready for when it's in the mid- Morheim Metzen, and like, they're just ready to go when needed. <laughs> You have them for centuries to come. Or it's but like, I want my own Morheim. Yeah, or it's like that episode of Westworld with the the guy that they're trying to create a like you know perfect copy of, but they're waiting for him to say what a year it's oh, been yeah, so to what they, confirm that he is legit. They sit him down and interview him yeah. every now and then, like <laughs> to, to test the copy. Yes. and they're like, "So, how was your year? <laughs> what a." Interesting question. They're like, no, uh, scrap it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grow the next one. <laughs> and that's what I thought. I thought I want to be at that stage because I want to see Mike Morheim. I want to catch his tears. I want to, you know, splash them all over my face and hopefully become one. Um, and uh, but Terpster was like, no, I've had a bit of a tip off that um, the uh, the Warcraft stage is where we want to be. So and we went there. We, we were doubtful. But as we went in there, we bumped into Christy Golden. Yeah. Just randomly, because yeah. she'd been let in. She wasn't supposed like, to be let in. Sitting in the back. Yeah, she's she like, was don't, like, don't yeah. take on me. Um, and, she, and we said, is it right? Should we be Should here? We and she's like, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so we did. And we sat there. And we were front and centre. Um, and uh, we... Uh, it was full, yeah. like all the other stages there, because yeah. everyone is there in the morning. It's awesome. All like, what, 35,000 people. Yep. Um, and our opening act in the opening ceremony was, of course, the one. Mike Morheim. The only Mike Morheim. And it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, because yeah. I love Mike Morheim. Same. I think he is such a dude. If he, he is could be, a like, real dude. If, I've got plenty of uncles. I've got uncles, but I would. he would be my number one. Sorry, actual uncles. Yeah. But he'd be my number one uncle. Sarts guys. Yeah. Because yeah. um, uh, like my uncles are nice. One of them even played for Liverpool. But did they did they make rock and roll racing? No. No. No, they didn't. Did they have a cool throw? No. When they were younger? No. no. Exactly. So no. sorry, Uncle Steve. 
you would be surpassed. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, and Mike gave a beautiful and touching speech, which literally made me weep. On the verge uh, of tears he was. I know, I The know. whole time. He didn't break. He didn't break. My goblet would have been useless. Uh, I'd have to use it for my crunk juice I... instead. <laughs> but my goblet would wow. have been useless. Um, but do you know what I was really disappointed with? Because he, he did what was expected, what we were told was going to happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he handed over to uh, J. Allen Brack. Brack. As we can see. Um, this is what we're going to be doing, by the way. Just yeah, these yeah, photos of it. Yeah. It's going to be a bit of a slideshow. Sorry, guys. Um, apart from the old video. Um, like I say, this is what we can do in hotel yeah. rooms. We're quite limited. Um, and in fact, I can feel the laptop overheating. Already, yeah. But we're going to be fine, I'm sure. Okay. Um, and uh, God, you can see how much shorter Mike Morheim is than J. Allen Brown. Yeah. Um, and, but do you know what I was really disappointed by? What? Was the fact that I wanted a Morheim montage. Oh, yeah. I was a waiting mortage. for one. I oh, was... no, that sounds bad. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I, mm, a mortar, a mortar, a montage. No. No. Okay. I wanted a Mike Morheim montage. I did. And I wanted the, I wanted the BlizzCon. The bling, 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 yeah. Bling, 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 you know, like, like the, the film that plays tw- in the beginning. That's Twenty-seven like... years ago, we never, and like he said all that shit. He we was like, did, we never did. guessed what kind of a journey we'd be setting out. But on. you know what? You know what? We didn't get the montage, and it's probably because Mike is such a cool, humble guy that he was like, no. I don't care. Montage. I don't care what he wants. I, I know, wanted a Mike more high, and I wanted to cry. I know. I know. I, to go, I, know, I was ready Mike. for it. Was it was probably out of respect to Jalen Brack. Yeah. Because that man has got a difficult job stepping I mean, we in. did have to wave glow sticks, but it... That was weird. It, okay, so there was like this kind of coordinated thing we had to do in the crowd. Yeah, and he was handing had paper. over. Well, the glow sticks were fine. We yeah. both, and we kind of waved yeah. it. We were like, okay. Yeah. Um, and, but there was like some weird thing people had to hold up. Bits of card. And they seemed to have and like... look through them like eye slits. Th- like, so it just made everyone look like they're in the KKK. A little bit. Because like, they were white card with like eye slits. Everyone was like, okay, bye, Mike. <laughs> I was like, I what are that. we saying here? Maybe what, because we weren't what at the main stage. What is the message stage. we're trying to convey? Maybe because we weren't at the main stage. We didn't, that didn't quite come across. Oh, if you watched so it on, like, the, on the virtual ticket, please tell us what that yeah, looked like. Because I tell you what, what it looked like to me. <laughs> and and but that's the thing because we've been joking earlier. We were like, when when Jalen Brack comes out, yeah. I want him to own that stage. I want him to come out in like black leather suit, yes. with leather gloves. Yes. I want him to be like, yeah, bye, Mike. And then I want him to crack his knuckles, and I want him to be like, there's gonna be some changes around here. Uh. I want him to rule with, like an, with an iron yeah, fist. And we seriously. were just joking about that. Yeah. But then when everyone looked like they were in the KKK, I was like, yeah. oh no, this premonition is coming true. Whereas it was wonderful to say goodbye to Mike Morheim and say hello to Jay Allen Brack, who is, I, n- I have no doubt, will be wonderful for Blizzard will be, like, and will grow into his role. Yeah. Um, but was a bit, didn't have the same kind of presence just and charisma as Morheim, same. did he? And he's just not, not the same. And he's not a Metzen either. He's not. Um, as we as we saw later on. Ooh, but spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, would still love to uh, talk to you. Hey, give us a call. Ah, oh, and look, he looks sad. He looks. He was very nervous. I thought actually. Yes, I mean, um, it's a, they're all. big shoes to step into. I mean, I don't well, know I mean, if they're actually they're, literally they're, big they're shoes. Like they be very big shoes. But still, in fact, it looks like Jalen Blackstock has considered to be bigger shoes <laughs> than my <Mike> Morheim. <laughs> I, if if Mike Morheim has got bigger shoes than Jalen Brack, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> You never know. Um, so yeah, but he did a great job, yeah. and he got things rolling. And um, we knew that the wow kind of announcement uh, in the opening ceremony would be quite a small thing, mm-hmm. and like it would essentially be like, "Hey, remember uh, when we did BFA?" Mm-hmm. And hey, remember there's going to be some classic stuff. And yeah. hey, you're looking forward to eight point one, guys. And we knew yeah. that's what it was going to be. And we had our fingers crossed. Just a little more. For maybe a little more. And oh. we kind of got that. Oh, yeah. So yeah. The, the, the first announcement we had was, um, like, the new Charity Pet. Yeah. Charity Pet last year did very, very well. Raised, like, a billion pounds or whatever. Yeah, amazing. Um, which was pretty awesome. Um, not as much as the uh, the Mercy, but, you know, just as well. And so, like, new... What, what do you think of, of Wampa? Yeah, he's adorable. He's all right, isn't he? He makes me sad. Are you going to buy him? Yep. Okay, good. Well done. You care about women encoding. I do. Congratulations. Me too. Yeah, Um, good. Yeah, (laughs) fantastic. Hope it makes a good billion pounds for women encoding. Fantastic. Um, And then we did get our cinematic. Yes, we did. Um, um, Okay, so one thing we're going to do for this entire video, by the way, is because obviously we made a predictions video. We did. Um, where we predicted everything that we thought would happen in uh, specifically the What's Next panel, but also in like Warcraft announcements uh, as a whole. And one of the big things that we predicted mm-hmm. was a Gen Grey main photorealistic cinematic. Yes. So like the uh, trailer, mm-hmm. like the um, old soldier cinematic, and we predicted that that would just get chucked right in there. Yeah. And lo and behold, this thing started and oh my. Oh yeah. You can imagine my face when this began. 
Um, and uh, we got a cinematic in the opening ceremony, and it's super realistic, oh, yeah. just like we predicted. I love that shot. That's such an opening shot. And we are such gonna do a proper shot. analysis of these when we get home, so we're just gonna scoot over this yeah. now. Uh, uh-oh, who's this in the background? Who's that in good the boy? the very first shot, looking like a very good boy, oh. Gen Greymane. And as you can imagine, this is the first thing that happened, <laughs> yeah. like with our big prediction, and I was there like, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Oh, were you? Yeah, because do you know what I was I missed imagining? that part. You, know I was yeah, you were too busy doing the same thing, probably. But I, I was imagining, I was like, I can't wait for all the internet to be like, Talia Sim, you were right again. You were so right. And I was yeah. like, I, I wasn't even watching at this stage. No, it was just like, no. Oh, just was like, so into like, yourself. Oh. You're, yes, internet, you're right, I'm wonderful, I'm brilliant. Ah, oh, yes. don't mention it, don't mention it. And I was thinking, well, any minute now, it's going to go back to Gen. Because mm-hmm. we know he's there. And we're like, oh, and here like, it comes. Blizzard Entertainment oh, presents Gen, Gen Greymane. Mm-hmm. Like, very good boy, or old very good boy. And we're like, we're at the cells, and we're like, well, where's Gen? Oh. Where's he gone? Come back. And it was at this stage we realised yeah, it wasn't gonna going to be a Gang Rayman cinematic. Um, but this was a, a brilliant cinematic um, and like really touching. We've watched it loads of times already. Yeah. We're going to talk about it properly in its own video. But a cinematic in 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 the, the opening yeah. um, uh, announcement, in the opening panel, which is pretty good going really. It's pretty brilliant. Um, then we had a release date. For uh, classic WoW, yeah. sort of kind summer of 2019. Summer. That yeah. could mean any number of months, but you know. And even more than that, even more important than that, um, uh, clarification on the subscription model. Yes. Um, which we were totally 100% right about, yes. which I wouldn't usually boast about because I think lots of people uh, thought it was going to be this, that it would just be whether or not there's a box price. It would be the subscription for it would be included in your live WoW subscription yes. at no extra cost yeah. because that is the game now yeah. and that's what you've got. You've got mm-hmm. WoW and you've got Classic WoW, a touch of a button on your battle net and you'll skip between the Boom. two and it's the one subscription you pay for the both. And I think yeah. most people hoped it was going to be I that. I think so, yeah. So I wouldn't usually claim that as like a prediction except as we were waiting to get into BlizzCon, we were talking to Terpster. You know Terpster? Like oh, yeah, Blizzard that guy. expert who like knows loads of people at Blizzard and like knows everything about everything because he's so clever. Um, <laughs> genuine hero of ours. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I was telling him, I was like, well, surely amazing. it would just be included in the subscription. He's like, no, no, that's not how it's going to work. It's going to be like, la, 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 la. And I was like, well, he's kind of my hero. So I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. Actually, you know what? You're right. That's exactly what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Terpster was wrong, Tanya was right, that's all I'm saying. Okay, you've said so, it. So do you know what? You've Terpster, said it. no longer my idol, Tanya now my idol, which well, many people but, might mm, have pointed out was yeah. the case before. We got classic news, we got a cinematic, yep. and we got all the usual nonsense over sort of um, 8.1 mm-hmm. uh, and things like that. So actually, there was quite a lot going on yeah. in the opening announcement, and yet, it still felt a little bit... It was a little... Uh, yeah, didn't it? A it was so so look we didn't get a Mike Morheim montage no. that was sad um there weren't enough like lights and confetti and stuff. <laughs> you, what, Do you know what I mean? I don't think it was, it was I meant think to maybe, be a I think maybe because we were on the Warcraft stage, but still, it was you know. Okay, there was felt, a slight detachment. It felt it, yeah. a little, definitely more subdued than yeah. last year. Yeah. Last year felt there were explosions. I don't know if there were actually explosions, but it felt like there were. So. Um, but yeah, but we did get this news, but it left a lot of us, I think, going a bit like, I really hope the What's Next panel actually tells us yeah. some good stuff. And then we were just sitting there going, can't wait for the Diablo announcement. Yeah. But before that, there was a surprise announcement. And that surprise announcement, mm-hmm. um, which people had been kind of suspecting might have happened, because they'd seen some like gaps in sort of interview like yeah. uh, schedules and things like that yeah. for a uh, classic interview not wow right. and that made everyone think maybe there's gonna be a, a diablo remaster or something like yeah. that um but as it turned out we got warcraft 3 reforged oh, don't you mean world of warcraft 3 <laughs> you're not allowed to say that i can say that's <laughs> yeah. a joke because everyone will be like oh that's a joke no you said they'll be like out, girls I'm girls don't know anything girls your, are idiots <laughs> i'm pointing out your funny mistake yeah exactly anyway. because we um have already done a, a huge video about this yes. where we talk about it um and so we're not oh, going to go into any detail cool about it look. but they do look really really cool and i'm um, really looking forward to it yeah. and we have had uh, conf- we had a few comments on the last video asking us this mm-hmm. um because we didn't mention it in the last video but um the when you buy uh 
World of Warcraft 3 Reforged, <laughs> um, you also get the two expansions as well. They, yeah. they are included in the package. Yeah. They are also Reforged. That's yes. why there's 40 hours of Reforged cinematics. There's a lot in there. Which is actually the most exciting thing about the entire yeah, game. For me. Like, I played cool. the game. The game's excellent, but I want to see those cinematics all remastered, yes. all rebuilt. It's going to be awesome. Can't Look how wait. cool this looks. Oh, yeah, yeah, For yeah. goodness sake. Um, really so, yeah, that was, and that was kind of like, actually, a much bigger deal than... I would say any other announcement yeah, there. Yeah, that got me more excited than anything yeah, else. Yeah, because the Overwatch be thing was cool. Um, yeah. With I know how you love Bob. I do love um, Bob. Uh, the Diablo thing. I feel sorry for literally everyone involved, yeah. devs and players alike, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're not going to touch on it. Yeah. So from there, we had a short little break. We ran back to the hotel, yeah. got all our stuff to go and do our dev interview. Yep. Forgot our camera, but it's okay because we, we had a really nice phone we could record it on. <laughs> nice phone. Hey, look, we had good sound equipment, My, and that's like, the main potato thing. potato camera. Exactly. The okay. sound quality is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And it's a really interesting interview. I can't wait for you to see it. It's we're actually release it as a separate cool. video yeah. um, after this one. Uh, and some really, really interesting little insights yeah. into sign- the design behind a lot of the stuff that's happening in BFA. Um, so cool. really pleased with it. Some really nice devs. Um, mm-hmm. So looking forward to that. But then we had just enough time to run back downstairs for the Wow What's Next panel. Oh, yeah. And this is like the main event. Mm-hmm. You know, we've already talked about some of this in its own separate video just before now, but there was mm-hmm. so much of it. What, what was your, like, as a, as a brief overview before we get started, yeah. what, what was your opinion of the Wow What's Next panel? I loved it. It kind of gave me what I wanted and I needed at that point after being a little bit like meh after the opening ceremony um i you know i love ian and i love his like demeanor and the way he delivers information like it makes me feel safe you realize that's a controversial <laughs> statement because I know right I now there are people below the line like typing like this all like this because maybe they're really good typers yeah, i don't know maybe or maybe they're maybe they're typers. very careful typers maybe. like this but maybe. whatever their typing style they're typing no, he's just a lawyer. He's terrible. You're an idiot for thinking that. He's a lawyer, slippery like an eel. Like mm, an eel that's mm-hmm. been to law school. Yes. <laughs> and raided high level in vanilla, <laughs> but also went to law school. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I know, I know. But I, this, I, whatever people are saying about that, I think he's clearly very intelligent, very capable, very smart, um, and really good at kind of delivering this information in a way that's like, it's pretty fast paced because there's a lot of it. Um, but I'm like, it, it hit all of my buttons. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask him for tips. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's only a few I know how to hit. <laughs> and when I say hit, I mean stroke. But, um, I, do you know what? <laughs> okay, I agree with you. And one of my least favorite things is when people say, oh, the lawyer thing. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like it's such a buzzword. It's... And I feel like it's so untrue. Because if there's one thing I appreciate about Ian, mm-hmm. um, apart from his, like, super casual dress sense which I, I think is nice um, and his intensity which I really like as well yeah. but something that often goes unappreciated with Ian is that he's a bit of a minx and like he's he's got a genuine like showman streak to mm-hmm. him and you can tell that when he like and it was something I'd been missing from nearly all of the other panels. Yes. He walked out and he had a stride on him mm-hmm. and he had a smile on him and he took that stage. Mm-hmm. Like he's got a really good stage presence. Yeah, he does. And that's helped by, he's kind of like the anti Talis and Evertel in a way. He's <laughs> yeah. got a great efficiency with the way he delivers information. Uh, he doesn't get sidetracked. <laughs> no, he doesn't. You know, there's like there's nothing you could say to him which make him start talking about like some biblical film that he saw like years ago when he was a kid starring Christian Bell. There's nothing that would make that happen. Okay, and mm. and that was just as well because yeah, there was so much stuff in this what's next panel. Yeah. Um, which I think is exactly what the community needed, exactly what the game needs is like just a promise of loads more to come. How did you feel about it generally? Generally, mm-hmm. I thought it was exactly what we needed. Yeah. And 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 I would have liked something maybe a bit more mic droppy. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were some, and the surprises that came was nothing like my mind is blown. Mm-hmm. The surprises that came were good surprises, like, more from a mm-hmm. hey, I'm impressed you're doing this much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Same. that. That was the surprise. Same. I don't like, think there was oh, anything cool. like as like jump up and down in your seat awesome as class mounts no like from the legion announcement or like the argus reveal no or anything like that so because no. that you came out of that panel and you were like wow was it i'm so glad i play wow gonna go buy that argus t-shirt yeah totally yeah. Yeah. which ian is rocking yeah um like uh, from now on yeah um but it was loads and loads of stuff and mm-hmm. as we will see in just a moment but he he started the panel and he prefaced it with basically kind of apologizing for Ezra Armour mm-hmm. and he said look we're going to tell you loads of stuff now and all the stuff we're going to reveal um 
I mean, he said, this is my favourite part of any BlizzCon, is mm-hmm. the What's Next panel. Yeah. Um, and I believe that. Totally. I genuinely do, because this is when he gets to come out and just go, look at all this cool stuff we're yeah. working on. Like, look Check at me rock it, because I'm a, a guy, uh, you know, I'm a showman. Yeah. I'm the greatest showman. I'm this surprised he didn't do that. Actually. <laughs> get his mic like that. Um, but he uh, also prefaced that with a basic apology for Azurite Armour. Which was, was really like, nice. We know that none of this content that we're going to introduce to you now means anything if the reward systems don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to make them work. We hear you and we're working. Yeah, exactly. And again, I know there'll be people commenting Mm -hmm. under this video. Mm -hmm. It's like, how dare you get excited about this new stuff when I still don't like Azerite armor? To which I would say, that's okay, man. Like, Azerite armor will still be rubbish when this video finishes. Mm -hmm. And we can go back to all hating Azerite armor. Although, that seems like a bit of a waste of energy when we've already had fixes announced which are in the pipeline. And I kind of feel like it's not really worth caring about Azerite Armour until those fixes have come out and haven't worked, and then we can be angry about Azerite Armour. Sure. So, like, in the meantime, I think it's okay to kind of get excited totally. about cool stuff coming up and yeah. not not dismiss all that cool stuff yeah. just because the fixes that have been announced haven't yet been implemented to a currency system that we don't like. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's you. pretty fair. And I, I think Ian did a really good job of... Like acknowledging that there had been problems and it wasn't good enough, and he said something like, "It's not what you deserve." Yeah. So yeah, well done, and I think that's awesome. I think that set the right tone straight away totally. um, for the rest of the panel. Obviously, talking about lots of eight point one point five, uh, eight point one stuff yeah. uh, that was coming. So his job, actually, despite it all, we didn't actually see much of Ian in this panel, um, and his job was quite a boring one. He was just yeah. telling us stuff that we already knew. Yeah, that we've already um, data about 8.1. And stuff, So that was yeah. another. Tally S in prediction that did not come true. Aww. Because I predicted we wouldn't talk about 8.1 and we did. in the slightest in the What's Next panel. And we did for a good like 20 minutes, in mm-hmm. fairness, mm-hmm. even though it was all just scooting over stuff we knew. So we yeah. talked about uh, the new assaults, which are basically Legion assaults, um, and they're fine. They're okay. Um, <laughs> the Warfront, Darkshore, and the story that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, oh no, and uh, uh, there was something that came with that a little bit later on. Um, fantastic. Just reminding us about all of this. New Island Expeditions with like your Gilneasy type themed Quite one cool. and things like that. The new raid, that's mm-hmm. a battle of Zara Law with your um, Horde versus Alliance, all that. All stuff that we know. But yeah, fine. It's nice to see new graphics yeah. of or whatever. Heritage armor. Looking great. And then a release date for it. Which is fantastic. Yeah. December um, 11th to 13th, which um, he actually apologised for. He, he was did. like, we he want did. to keep like the, uh, the 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 content train going like we did the in Legion. The dev cycle, be, like fresh. Exactly. So uh, based on that, because it's quite clear that's what they're doing here, yeah. a lot of people have predicted a much earlier release date for yes. um, Tides of Vengeance, even maybe launching this week after BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think of that as a release date? That feels fine to me. Yeah. I'm happy with it. I to might... be honest, it's not much time for you to get your hip on out. Well, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm thinking. Like... <laughs> I might even be slightly disappointed with that, <laughs> you know, if it was in isolation. Yeah. But all I was thinking of, I, I was like, how long have I got to get my hippo mount? Because I'm only like 45% of the way to my hippo mount right You'll now. You'll get there. I've got some You'll PvP to be doing when yeah, we get seriously. home, man. Like, anyone that wants to group up with me for twos or battlegrounds, please carry me. Please take me to the hippo. Yeah, but only if your rating is high enough. Because you don't group up with noobs like yeah, me. No, I, I'll be carried. That's oh. great. They'll have the high rating. Okay. And like, I need someone with a really high rating, who much higher than me, so that when we beat people, mm-hmm. I get like loads of points. Mm-hmm. That's what we need. So I've got until December, well, probably like maybe a week or two before December the 11th to get yeah. my hippo. I'm not massively confident, Evertel. I believe in you. And at that point, we had Ryan Schwader come up on stage. Uh, and talk about 8.1.5. Yeah, Ian pretty much just handed off. He was like, okay, yeah, was I've, like, I've done the bit that no one wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I've dropped one nice bit of information, yeah. but otherwise I was basically just keeping people waiting for the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that, Ian. Um, and we handed over to, and this guy's excellent. Yeah. What's his name, Ian? Sorry? Ryan Schwader. Ryan Schwader, you're awesome. You've got some some good stage presence good as well. Stage I, I, I thought all of the presenters in this What's Next they panel were, were great. Top draw. They were really I, th- I good. thought John Height did very well in the opening ceremony as yes. well. The ironically named John Hyde. <laughs> I didn't even think of it that way. Uh, he's tiny. I've never thought of it that way. How did I miss an obvious joke like that? And then John Height came out, and obviously he was like this far away from us. But to be honest, it felt like he was much further away. <laughs> <laughs> How far 
far away. Oh, John Hyatt. Anyway, and this is where it started getting good. Because I think really no one really wanted to hear about 8.1.5 either. Not we all really. wanted to get on yeah, to 8.2. Yeah. Um, but there was some pretty good stuff here. Yeah, Zen Larry like Trolls. The Allied Race stuff. And yeah. there was only one question on everyone's lips yeah. when it came to the uh, Allied Races. Because we all know mm-hmm. what we need to unlock them. We all know like what their heritage armor looks like yeah, at this point. We yeah. all know like you know what they, everything about them really, apart from what classes they would be. And he teased us. Oh, he did. The, he paladin did. the paladin bit paladin in the bit. bottom right didn't appear. Oh. He was like, and these are their classes. And mm. and honestly, and that was the biggest cheer of the day so yeah, far. I know. I know. People <laughs> loved it. Yeah. Um, and this I is, love it. This is pretty much every class uh, that pal- uh, that um. What can't they be? They can't. Mm. Mage monk priest route. Um, can't be death knights, obviously. No, because uh, no, no allied race can. But that's a pretty exhaustive. That's list. a good list. Um, so that's uh, that's good news for horde players and sandlowy troll players. I'm probably gonna race change my shaman. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a dark spirit at the moment because he's he's a can, you know. Yeah. But those those models, they're so good. They look amazing. It's a can. You might be. Uh, you might be getting your green card. I love all this. You the might gold. be moving to Zandalar. Nice. You might be becoming a citizen. You've been there for a while. You've been there for the last couple of months. You know, you might as well just yeah. move there, make it your home. Yeah. Um, and we got all the information, like their uh, their um, uh, racials and things like that. Regenerating. Um, yeah. I love that. Uh, I'm not so sure. I like this one. Loot additional gold from monsters. Pretty cool. I might just change all of my alts. Yeah. I think the way um, this was talked about, it's like, well, Zandalari trolls are lovers. Lovers of their loa and of gold and of dinosaurs. I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. That's oh, cute. and lo, their amazing cute. dinosaur mount. Really a cute. reskin of the one that I believe will cost you 500,000 gold if you yeah. want to buy it. So just skip that and become a Zandalari troll. Good clearly. idea. Um, and uh, their travel forms, which are obviously just amazing. Because we've seen all of this stuff the before bear, as well. And this is the good. thing. like, There's no actual new information no. about this. But it it's just, exciting it to see. It was the first time anyone's right? ever really sat down exactly, and talked about exactly. it. So this is good. Not so many choices for uh, cult and humans. So if you were to start a cult now. Well, this didn't give us the information we wanted to know about culture and humans because what we really want to know is are we going to have the thin option yeah like that cool skinny we guy are. are we going to be able to have like the normal human female because if we can have normal human female yeah then my main Mivanwi my dispriest she, she's changing to culture and human like that yeah. No two ways about it. And it's not that I've got anything against the female uh, Kul Tiran form. I think you just want to keep it I think it's same. awesome because yeah. I'm actually going to create probably a survival hunter female nice. Kul Tiran so I can be exactly like Rosalind because she is the coolest character in BFA, I reckon. <laughs> and um, I cut this bit when we talked back from the last video, uh, but we actually met the quest designer who designed Rosalind. We did. Uh, the night before BlizzCon started. So which cool. was, and she, was, she came up to us, she found us out. She's like, hi, why do you like Rosalind so much? Like, because I designed her. I was like, she's awesome, that's why. Yeah. And so, like, I'm, I love the Kulturian uh, female, but I don't want to change how my main looks. Because no. I, she means a lot to me. She's my yeah, long time main. She's got an iconic I would never I would never race change her. No. Um, so if I could have her essentially be the same, but just Kulturian. I'd That'd change it cool. instantly. Just for cool. RP purposes. Yeah. I just want her to be cool too. I know what you mean. Like, I love cool yeah. uh, She would totally move there. She'd totally emigrate there and make that happen. Yeah. Like, I know she would. I know her. Yeah. I know her very well. <laughs> um, so, uh, obviously, the uh, I, I still think there's room for some, uh, like, cool... Yeah. Tide Sage effects know, for their priests. I know, I know. We'll I, see. Maybe that will be revealed later. I kind of feel like they would have mentioned that already. On. But another human shaman and another human druid, which is excellent news for cool. everyone. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I'm not one of those people that's particularly interested in racials. No, but, but I do um, like the punching just, one. The stun is obviously a good one for yeah. a, uh, PvP. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Swimming? There's a swimming one. Increasing all trade skills. Yeah, whatever. In fact, brush it off is, yeah, depending on what the actual numbers are, could be pretty good could as well. Could be okay. Yeah, anyway. The, uh, okay, no one really wants um, a, uh, dark moon fair. a dark moon fair announcement in no. in their what's next panel, No, because they? then you know that maybe it's being padded out with things. But to be you honest... You kind of hear the barrel being scraped a Yeah, bit and there. everyone's like... Oh. It's like, yeah, there's a there's a cool new ride. There's a roller coaster. Although... It looks awesome. It Whoever looks did this, cool. fantastic. The, like... The that's, roller coaster looks good. That's what I want to see announced in like Ian doing like a live stream. Yeah. Does it give you a buff where you pee yourself? Why would that be a buff? That doesn't sound like a buff. I'll remember that next time I'm really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you throw you me out of bed just in case like I pee myself. I'm like, system. that's a buff. <laughs> Why are you scared of this buff? <laughs> um, 
Children's Week, awesome seeing like proper use in those Kulturian so humans. So cute. And then some like children. They're so, so good. Cute. Um, oh, by the way, that quest designer who designed Roslyn also designed the scary child quest in um, Drusfar. Yeah. So, so, so well cool. done, you. So cool. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, great. Micro holidays. Festivals. Fantastic. I mean, this is all good stuff. Free t shirt day. It's just not what's next stuff, yeah. is it? It's you know? okay. Ah, oh, and this was okay. So oh. there, at this stage, I was actually getting a bit worried. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, this is loads of stuff, and it's all coming quickly, but none of it's getting me very excited right yeah. now. And what time walking can go jump off a cliff? Yeah. I don't even care. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, there's no. I, yeah, do you, you know could what? feel the room deflate. I a wouldn't bit be because like, everyone, like, everyone was still oh. on a bit of a low from Diablo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rightly or wrongly, yeah. whatever. Not my place to say. I don't know anything about Diablo. I don't really care. But there was definitely a, like a downer mood about everything. And um, this did not help. No. Nope. And um, because I remember when time walking first started at the end of WAD, like the joke was, one day, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to get WAD we're time get, walking. Yep. What are you going to think about and that? And everyone's like, oh, I coming. don't want to think about that. That's probably too far in the future. The day has <laughs> nearly come. Um, and here it is. Yep. And Whew, yeah, it yeah. feels exactly like we all thought yep. it would feel. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's cool. I'm gonna need, but I'm going to need some unique skins if I'm going to... I'm with like, you. Some unique models, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. Because the skins are unique. Yeah, but yeah. Whatevs. Portal rooms. Cool. Great. It's got quite awesome. a cheer, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a new, new place to be, new place to hang out. That's yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, like, quality of life stuff. That's all fine. Yeah. This is quite interesting. The tools of the trade quest lines. Yeah. Does it solve uh, trade skills? No, because no. they're still terrible. You still no. can't really make anything worthwhile for other people that you can sell. No. But this is kind of cool. Um, like, for example, I am... Uh, a, a, a tailor so I get something that lets me sew cloth from the past present and future cloth displaced in time can be found more often in the world mm. so I can make something that makes me pick up more cloth yeah I mean it's cool it's like another like layer to sort of trade skills and stuff and crafting yeah. skills and that's great more yeah. of that is it's not enough to kind of make it interesting but mm-hmm. it's it's better like it's improving yeah. it's fun improvements it's yeah. flavour it is fun and it is flavour but it's not the big announcement you want no it's is not it? that's the thing Brawler's Guild again we all cool. love Brawler's Guild fun like great and that's you know what I never get excited about Brawler's Guild no, me neither. but it's a good like 6-7 hours of content yeah there. it's alright so like I always enjoy it when I do it and yeah. I always feel bad that I wasn't excited when it was announced exactly. so I'm going to assume that I'm just being an idiot about it again yeah. um, and like it's a, a, a plot line going yeah, along with fun. Brawler's Guild as well fun cool I'm not sure I want a plot line with Brawler's Guild I know I, I know like the kind mean. of the bish bash bosh aspect of it and I appreciate like the, the ambition y- yes yeah I get it but, but I mean, again, this still felt a bit like, okay. It's not the death of crony, is it? No, it's not. It's not. Um, this is good, though. I'm all down for a new trans model. Super set. cool. Uh, and, and that's awesome. So all of this stuff in 8.1, it's a These 0.5 patch. Cool. Yeah. And like that's really important to kind of point out is that none of this stuff is going to be big because no. it's not a point one. No. It's not, you know, it's it's an in-between patch. Yeah. Yeah. And they're always fun and they're mm-hmm. always good and they're always like a nice little shot in the arm just when you need it yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a kind of a, a patch cycle. But it doesn't make the most exciting announcements in a What's Next. No. That's the thing. No. Uh, okay, the, the PvP brawls. Ah, uh, the whole fighting against AI thing. At no. least it's only a brawl that's yeah. only going to crop up every now and then. Exactly, and you don't have to do it if you don't want yeah. to, basically. Yeah, I thought that this combined kind of a low point of the Island Expedition's AI yeah. with some kind of PvP brawl thing. Yeah. It just... The, mm, I, I wasn't like, really feeling yeah, this. Yeah, I was a bit of a low in my attention graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, my, like, my, mm. my kind of like excitement graph of this panel kind of started up here yeah. and like got a bit higher because Ian came on. I love Ian. He's all sassy and that. And I was dipping because he was talking yeah. about like 8.1, which I knew all about. But, you know, I still kind of, you know, yeah, I knew it wouldn't cool. take long. And then like this dude comes on, starts talking, and went, right up here because yeah, I was like ah yeah, oh. no, it good, kind of good. dropped pretty steadily yeah you know okay. and I, I felt the energy in the and it wasn't his fault by no, any means no, no, it's no, just no. It's talking just about the, a point the, five the content, you know yeah, yeah exactly and, anyway um, and then it started getting good though yes because oh, at last me. a Talies and Never Tell prediction came yes. true and this is a good one actually yeah. I'm, I'm quite pleased about this yeah, one me too uh, Worgen and Goblin models thank goodness yeah, look at those long spaces. promised long talked about what do you think about these I think they're adorable yeah I mean yeah th- I mean, they're that's ridiculous. such an improvement for male goblins Seriously. like it's unbelievable Seriously. and like they look pretty much exactly the same they've just got a gazillion more poly- polygons in yeah uh, which is fantastic but while we were kind of doing the, the goblin ones everyone was like yeah that's great that's really great um, 
we need to know what the Wolgan look like. Yeah, and yeah. particularly the female Wolgan. Yeah, and yeah. they knew that and they kept it till yeah. last. Now, oh, what do you think about this? I think they look great. Yeah? I think they look so good. I, I love mean, those faces. I don't mind the current Wolgan ones. I know they're pretty low res. The male ones. Yeah. Okay, the female ones are yeah, an abomination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're but horrific. like, the, I, I quite like the male ones because their low polygon count yeah. makes them quite pointy and old school. I think I they're like still that. super pointy. Yeah, but they I mean, look I much like meaner these. now. They do. Like they do. They look really good, but they still look true. I mean, they yeah. look pretty much exactly like what they currently are, yeah. just with more which detail. What, which is what you want, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. No, okay. Do you know what? I really like them. I'm really feeling them. What do you think about the females? I think they're adorable. Yeah, thank goodness. I think like, they're so cute. Um, they just don't look really stupid. No, they don't look stupid. Look at her little, like, wrinkled nose. Yeah. Well, they've got proper snarls. snouts going on now. Yeah, they've got is, snouts. Yeah, I mean, they look like got... wolves now. They do. They look like dogs, which yeah, they yeah. should have done. I know. From this the beginning. This actually really makes me want to play a worgen. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, who would you play your worgen as? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Maybe you could race change your uh, your uh, nightborn priest that you never play. Maybe, maybe. Can't make you play it. Nah, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't like Wargan casters. They do funny. Like they're too. Well, got, they're too got energetic. Funny, yeah, they've got. They're funny, too energetic. Like, it's like, like you, they're dogs. Ah, you're, right? you're trying too hard, man. Like yeah. most dogs. Because they're dogs. Isn't it's because they're dogs. They just want to please you. Oh, but I like I that about them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I think that then people's attention was starting to go yeah, up again because yes. they knew it was getting into the good stuff now. Yes. And that's when we got to the main event, which was obviously eight point two. Jeremy Fiesel uh, uh, sort of introduced all of this. Yeah. Um, and he was brilliant. Yeah, who also has like great presentation yeah, and like skills our and energy. presenters and... in the What's Next panel yeah. were just all top jaw. It's really fantastic. Great. And this is when Najatar was revealed. Now, we've done a whole video on Najatar and Mechagon um, and the two zones and all the enemies that we're fighting. It's a half hour video. Go and check it out. Um, we'll go into proper detail in it there because it's mm -hmm. a really exciting thing. Here you've got two different zones. An entire zone. Um, as your kind of main sort of hub for, for I think what will probably be the entire patch yeah. um, with story content um, we actually bumped into in our Patreon meetup we bumped into um, someone who is writing the war campaign uh, for Najita so cool um, and she's really excited about uh. it so that makes me excited about it too yeah. um, and um, that's all I could get out of her Sorry. Well, these Blizz employees, they're just too good. I know. They so never tell us anything. They're terrible. But that's good. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, but it looks like, obviously, the war campaign will be spread over six or 12 weeks or whatever mm -hmm. and taking all these different zones and stuff. And it will culminate in the raid, the uh, Eternal Palace of Ashara, which just sounds awesome. There might be an underwater boss that might have Question been a troll mark. from it Jeremy Fiesel. It could have been a really good troll. Yeah, but this is the raid we've been waiting for, basically, yeah. since the expansion started. Yeah. Yeah. And, like... This is what I, I think is so impressive about the attack on Zazara Law raid. Mm -hmm. Is like it's the only raid that could have happened that wouldn't have been a disappointment for not being the Ashara raid. It's true. By way of it being like Just this so really cool. interesting yeah. Horde vs. Alliance yeah. raid. The mechanics are so interesting. But this is about one it. we've all been waiting for. So this takes up the um the Tomb of Sargeras placement. Mm -hmm. Um and I gotta say Najatar clearly looks better than the Broken Shore. It's looking pretty good. Um, it just looks like it's more of a place than the Broken Shore. Yeah. I, I'm certain there'll well, be I mean, much the more to Shore do was on just there. Like rocks. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and, <laughs> but not just in how it looks, and not just uh, yeah. uh, the fact there's a whole war campaign going on there as yeah. well. But the way they were talking about, uh, and, and the emphasis that Jeremy put on repeatable daily content mm. that kind of goes beyond just world quests what and takes in be? kind of elements of like lots of different sort of repeatable um, content from other expansions mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, really interesting. And if they deliver on that, yeah. and I always think we should assume they will, um, then that would be absolutely brilliant and considerably better than what we got in 7.2, yep. all things considered. <laughs> um, and uh, this raid just looks excellent. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, I'm, I, I've just Is been waiting. Is it going to culminate in Queen Ashara? Are we going to kill her? Well, what it says Are we going to bring it her to our inside? Ashara. Well, you know what happens you well, know, when we defeat her. Okay, so we're, we're taking out the Naga hatchery, yeah. which like I think is pretty symbolic. There's a reason that's there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of telling us that there will be no more Naga after we do this raid. Well, also, that I we think people are just their reproduction system. really interested in how Naga reproduce. Yeah, I'm, I know I am. I know I've thought about it a lot in the mm, past. Mm -hmm. And I've got a feeling I'm probably going to be disappointed. <laughs> but then came like the really interesting thing, and that's when this panel kind of really took off. Was because we we predicted this, a lot of other people were kind of assuming this. Mm -hmm. 
But then we got a surprise in another new zone and another new bunch of peoples in the Mechanomes. And I oh, count this, guys. Epitel, as a massive tick for our massive predictions. Tick. Because that was one of our most left field predictions, mm-hmm. was Mechanomes. Mm-hmm. Which or got quite poo pooed. Did get poo pooed by a, a big number of our viewers. Yeah. Well, we called them Junker Gnomes. We did. Which even that was a massive win because yeah. when Jeremy Fiesel introduced them, he called them Junker Gnomes. He did. He did. He's he's been rehearsing this. <laughs> he's got it written in front of him. He's got it written on the actual slide himself, and he still said Junker Gnomes. Yeah. Which just made us even more right. Yeah. So Jeremy, thank you. Checks in the post. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Look at these guys. They're and, adorable. And they're amazing. Oh and my they, god, they're so cool. We, we talk about these loads in our other video as well. They've clearly got um, Allied Race written all over them. Yep. Um, can't wait for that. We'll, we'll go into um, lots of detail about this. And the new Mega Dungeon, mm-hmm. uh, which is like Karazam was um, uh, in before 7.2, wasn't mm-hmm. it? 7.1.5. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a, an 8-boss, mythic-only Mega Dungeon. Um, with a lockout, so you don't have to do it all in one go, but you'll have to put a group together, you'll have to go through there. Cool. Um, and I'm much more excited about this than I was about Karazhan. Same. Like, oh. it's yeah. essentially a five-man Karazhan raid. Can't this looks wait. Great. This looks so up my alley. We talk about all of this in the other video, mm-hmm. go and check it out, because now we're going to stuff that we haven't talked about. Because he, he said there will be new war campaign. Yeah. And there's stuff that people have picked up about this slide. Oh. And there's stuff that people haven't picked up about this slide that, as oh. far as I'm aware, only we have noticed. So first of all is this picture of Sylvanas mm-hmm. holding Zalatath, the old uh, Shadow Priest artifact weapon, yeah. which has got tongues wagging. Now, mm-hmm. what do you think this means? Uh, clearly, Sylvanas is either entering into some pact with the Void and the Old Gods, or she's being manipulated by them. Mm, that's what you think. I think that's what they think. I think, I think that's, that's what, what they, they want think we you want. to well. think. I think, okay, so uh, we were talking about this uh, last night at our Patreon meetup um, quite heatedly. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a red herring. Okay. Well, because, spoiler easy, alert, right? we don't have our spoiler alert graphic on this no, computer. No, so sorry. you're just going to have to, like, um, I'll do the little, like, when we do like this, <laughs> you can watch again. Yeah, spoiler alert. Skip but. through till we do this. Um, yeah. But uh, we know that um, throughout. Uh, whatever happens in the Covenant of Storms and the world quests that we know will be happening in, in uh, Storm Song in the Covenant of Storms, yeah. we will regain Zalatath. Yeah. No matter what class we are, we get Zalatath and we take him, her down to the uh, the world quest. We take her down to the world quest, we kill Naga with her, mm-hmm. and when we kill Naga, their essence feeds Zalatath. Yeah, you absorb their souls. Yeah, and to build up her strength after mm-hmm. it was drained uh, on the Sword of Sargeras. Mm-hmm. Um, and over the course of that patch, or half patch, or whatever it is, however long we're there, we build up her strength to a point where she actually gets reborn into a void elfy type body. And she's a real person. She is essentially Azathoth from mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the, the, the Lovecraft mythos. She's like this intergalactic traveler and she's like, I will go out and explore the stars and you better hope that we don't meet again. Yeah. And, and then she zooms off. So what happens to the actual dagger itself? I kind of assumed that she just formed Becomes into the, it. But yeah. This would suggest that she actually like is released Leaves from it. Like the a, dagger. Yeah, like Maybe. a voidy genie from the bottle. Yeah. Like a sexy, oh, brilliant genie. Relax. Wow, but this is good because it means like we still get to keep the dagger, and yeah, maybe maybe Sylvanas does take it on uh, as her own weapon to kind of signify what I value. Can see that. But I kind of hope that we get to hang on to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, after I know all what you that, mean. I, to, to be given it back again after all this time, my waifu. I know it's not the same because she's like the voice she's is gone. gone and stuff she's like that. Gone. But I still want to hang on to it. Yeah, some some remnant. Yeah, of your love. Yeah, like you know, mm-hmm. you know when you're sniffing the, the bed. When someone's... Okay, I'll cut that bit. <laughs> um, so that's the thing everyone noticed. Yeah. And um, you that's can the end of the again. spoilers. That's the end of the spoilers. Um, uh, that's the thing that everyone noticed. But the thing that no one noticed... Um, well, we got Saofang with all his armour back on, which is excellent. Right. He's not Obi, Obi Saofang Obi anymore. Right. <laughs> um, and obviously they mentioned uh, Jaina and Anduin, to be expected. Mm-hmm. But did anyone notice how they referred... To Jaina and Anduin. How did they refer to Jaina and Anduin? Jeremy Fiesel referred to um, Jaina and Anduin as the linchpins 
of the uh, alliance assault or something Ooh. like that. But he used the word linchpins, yeah. which is an unusual turn of phrase. It's quite a and particular not, word, Not right? an entirely accurate turn of phrase either when it concerns mm. these two characters. And I was like, wow, that jarred a bit. Mm. What does linchpin sound like, Evertel? Lynch. King. What does lynch king sound like, Evertel? Lich King. We got there. Yeah. We did it. We like like Sherlock Holmes. We got to the bottom of that. I I I think he's toying with us. I think I, there's going to be. I think there's so many teasers in this presentation. You've all heard. If you watched our last video talking about Najatar and uh, Mechagon, you've heard my theory about where this expansion is going to end. My new theory, which I'm like 100 percent sure on, yeah, is that we're going to the Shadowlands, and I think Nihilotha is probably a part of the Shadowlands, mm -hmm. and I think there's going to be some stuff going down in Northrend in the Shadowlands. For sure. Well. That's what. That's my current theory. That's what, uh, I, what do you think about Anduin having his helmet on? Do you is think there, that's is there a reason? Is there a reason why we can't see his face? He, oh, you reckon he might be hiding something underneath? What, what, what do you think he's hiding? I don't know. His first little tufts of beard? Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's like, embarrassed. Look, I'm just growing it out, okay? Did you notice though in the in the cinematic? It's the. Did you notice in the cinematic where you know he's looking out over Stormwind Harbor and the light's beaming down on him? He does have like a little tiny stubble. <gasps> no, he's got fluff. Yeah, he's got a little. He's fluff. got bum fluff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anduin, you're getting there, mate. I know. Oh, I, I really want. Proud. I, I really want to hear his voice start to break, <laughs> yeah. like in the middle of a battle. I want to be like, "For the Alliance." <laughs> I think that'd be really awesome. But anyway, oh. no one else seems to have been mentioning the, the odd use of the term linchpin. Well, but I, I picked up on it, it and I think it's significant. I think it's important. And even Jeremy Fiesel <laughs> was like, oh, and, uh, we're going to do some stuff uh, with uh, 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 No one really cares, do they? Yeah. And isn't that sad that no one cares about I that? care. Yeah. I care. Uh, but even Jeremy Fiesel was like, no. Uh, some new heritage armor for, um, like, this is the longest video ever. But what do you think yeah. of this? I think they look great. Yeah, the uh, I I started like um, leveling a high mountain tauren from scratch, mm -hmm. so I could get their heritage armor, which looks quite a lot like this. It does. But I prefer this heritage armor, and the fact that I can just change a high my my max level character to a normal tauren and just go on a quest and get this That's... means my high mountain tauren who is still at like level 40 or something, is gone. He's dead. Yeah. He's gone forever. There's no way, I don't care about that. Sorry. Jammer, when I can get this much, much easier, it's the exact cool. same effect. Exactly. It looks so cool. It looks really and it's got good. The proper, oh, and that's part of the cape. Yeah. And it's just, oh yeah. man, so it. great. Even better than this though, Oh. Is the gnome heritage? Now, you know, this it, is so sick. It is really adorable. Because designing good armor for gnomes is difficult. I know, because they've only, got, they've only got, look, they're like this John is squat and white. And it's, oh, oh, they're adorable. But these are great. And awesome goggles above your head as well. Which you can wear above your head. So cool. Not necessarily on your High face. res, unlike most of the other goggles in the game. Yep. Um, just really awesome. Brilliant color Super scheme. Super cute. Oh, they're going to look so cool lining up against mecha gnomes, aren't they? They are. Awesome. Big win for Harry Jama. That's an easy one. We always yeah. get excited about Harry Jama. But yeah, this is like, I don't think anyone would have guessed goblins and tauren. No. Uh, sorry. Uh, gnomes and tauren. Yes. Yeah. I, um, so we're really happy with that. That's so good. Will look good when they play as the Tinker class next expansion as well. I think it will. Mm. And some new information on island expeditions. Nothing particularly exciting about this. Crestfall is an island uh, that um, featured in Warcraft 2. Yeah. Which got some hmms. From the audience. Oh. Kind of a... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. They were still on a bit of a high from all the cool stuff yeah, they'd just seen. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're like, they're, you can show me yeah, anything now. It was now still and pretty be like, high. Hmm. Yeah, there are... Um, and Snow Blossom, which is a nice. Pandaria-themed one. Which and I really like, actually. If it plays the Pandaria music, I'm going to be extremely Seriously. happy. Seriously. Um, and I, I feel like this is kind of island expeditions coming full circle um, and coming back to the, the like the Mr. Pandaria scenarios that we all know they want to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. And do you know what? I, rec I reckon that island expeditions are in a much better place now than when well, uh, when the expansion first Oh, launched. God, definitely. Um, like, you've seen it in the last couple of weeks, like, the difference the new weather effects make and mm -hmm. new invasions mm -hmm. and stuff make. Um, they're still the same mechanics and the same sort of thing, yeah. but they're, they're a bit more different and a bit more interesting every time. So the more variety we can get in them, the better. I'm down with that. And that looks beautiful, actually. Fair to Looks pretty good. That looks really good. Aww. Aww. <laughs> ah! Flying 
unsurprisingly, coming at 8.2, yep. the exact same uh, phase it came in Legion, mm -hmm. like very much keeping to a script here, but it's a good script. I it like is. it. Now, obviously, flying will let you fly over Zandalar and Kultiris, mm -hmm. I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Won't be no flying in Neshita. No. No. Uh, no, no, no. Or, or um, Mechagon, I'd no. imagine. No. But that blow was sweet, and I, oh, I look forward to all the drama that's going to come with that. Oh, I know it. Oh, I can't wait for it. Yeah. I am a consumer, and this is what I have paid for, and this is what I deserve. <laughs> But look um, at that B. Yeah, look we get the B mount. Everyone loves the B mount. And wow. Yeah. What do you think of the mechanical parrots? Yeah, I think they're adorable. Well, um, I mean, I think they're great for tinkers. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that's going to be open to all, or do you think that is uh, is that crying out to be a class mount for the uh, mechanome allied race? Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. Uh, yeah. Not uh, as good as the hippo. Not nearly. Uh, as good. It's this PvP season that I really want to be getting. Yeah. Um, uh, that, however, is that really is cool. Sick. The old uh, fairy dragon thing. Ah. Uh, Great, great Proto Drake. Stuff. Proto Drake. Yes, sorry. But it's but not a fairy dragon. It's a Proto Drake, but it's in fairy dragon colours. That's true. Which is awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like the best of both worlds yeah. there. Um, I, I, With our Yeah, rank. but I, I, would ne I would never get Gladiator because no. like, I can grind out a hippo, but I'm okay. never going to get Gladiator. It's so okay. whatevs, man. Um, and that was actually a really really good kind of presentation. It was a great uh, panel. I mean, it, yeah. And when this slide came up, and it was clear we were just recapping uh, everything in 8.2, mm -hmm. everyone's mind was starting to wander yeah, and we were like, oh. to the Argus reveal yeah. in 2016. Where's that so last we frame? And they actually did the same thing. Yeah. They actually did the exact same <laughs> thing. Jeremy Fields was like, and, you know, that's the end. And that's it literally that. said, the end, yeah. above him. And then the question mark came up, <laughs> just like it did in 2016. Yeah. Like the exact, it could have been the same slides. Whereas, yeah. whereas in 2016, we got a picture of Argus, and it's like, we are literally going to Argus. This is what's mm -hmm. happening. It was a bit more obscure. We just got the fish from the Ajara cinematic. Yeah, you can, you can like, just make a map. Well, I couldn't really see it on the screen either. Yeah, yeah. Talia so, was like, what? What is it? What, 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 what is it? What, what, what is it? What is it? Was it? Fish. He's like, okay, what right, fish? Okay. And I'm like, the fish that wants your essence. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's like a, an explicit yeah. um, trail for Nazoth, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it's got to be. Yeah. So I, yeah, Nazoth, maybe underwater, maybe Shadowlands, but that's what's coming in 8.3, guys. We shall see. Although, the other thing we've been talking about is that maybe 8.3 wouldn't be the final patch of the expansion. I feel like the war campaign mm -hmm. and the way that kind of lays out story and stuff means that we could be in for a longer expansion than normal. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we could go to an 8.4 and 8.5. Wow. They did mention mention 8.5 as a joke ah, at some point yes. in the uh, the presentation, didn't they? But I, I don't know. Maybe that's a little hint that that's where we could be going. Maybe it's real. And so overall, I think everyone was really happy uh, with the What's Next panel. I, yeah. I feel like people kind of came out of there with a bit of spring in their step. Yeah. They're like, that's what we needed. It felt good. Yeah, it did feel good. And mm -hmm. it felt like I, there were some really interesting things coming up. Mm -hmm. Lots to look forward to. I think it's cool. And there was... And the thing was, there was loads of it. And that's what I really appreciated. And I think that's what you've got to have from a Wow What's yeah. Next panel. Yeah. There's got to be just like, because we, we've seen what happens when there's only a few things that you're hanging everything on, mm -hmm. um, is that it doesn't work and you get content droughts. So yeah. to have everything like one thing after another, after another, after another, and you might not like this, but you might like this, um, and, and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but then we ran straight to the cinematics panel, yeah. um, which was brilliant. Now, who have we got here, Evertel? We've got Mike Kelleher. Anna Morgan, Mark Messenger, uh, Christy Golden, Taryn Gregory, and Doug Gregory. Well done. Ooh, you only had to look down at your phone once there. I That's did. really good. Sorry. You, you yeah, know your cinematics directors. Clearly. I do. Um, but you know how much we love the cinematics on this channel. Yeah. You know how much we love all of these guys here um, and talking about their work. So even though this started the exact second that the What's Next panel ended and we were doomed to miss at least the first 15 minutes of it because it's the other side of the entire convention center. It was a long run. We got there. We got there. We did and it. And we saw the vast majority of it. And some of the things they showed us in this panel was super interesting. So cool. And I wouldn't usually talk about this, but there's one interesting little line that came out of it that again, no one has reported on um, that we saw because we were there. And none of the things you've read reporting on it have told you this, but we can tell you it. Yes, what I loved about this was showing their process working through like Daughter of the Sea, um, and they, they showed them, like the people on this panel and one or two others yeah. wrote, wrote the music and played the, like, the original demo tracks like in their yeah. office. These guys all work in the same office. Yeah. Like, 
a round of war yeah, and they amazing. talk to each other the whole time and that's the first time this has process. happened in this expansion yeah. and I think you can see that in the way that the you stories totally and the cinematics tell. work together totally. amazing fantastic um, and they show us the process the Jane is cinematic absolutely beautiful mm-hmm. wonderful one of my favourite things that's ever happened this is one of my favourite things when they're talking about the super realistic cinematics yeah. um, of which Lost Honour is the new one yeah. uh, which you'll be getting a video on very soon from us but they show the motion capture that they do not motion capture but the, 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 the real kind of movement that they use as a guide yeah. um, to, to get the movement for, for these cinematics. And it's just done by anyone hanging out in the office. Yeah, they just get dudes like, in the office. With foam blocks as pauldrons. Yeah, and, um, and they, they just put them on yeah. and they go, can you just turn around a bit moodily? Yeah. So you get this epic dude yeah. um, who is awesome, but not quite Anduin, is he? <laughs> um, and you can see when they showed it in motion, we don't want to do that because it's probably against the rules of the virtual yeah, ticket. Yeah. We don't want to get in trouble. Um, when they show, and it's literally frame for frame, yeah. they use like his movement. He's turning around, looking angry. And it's great because you see these, you see these dudes in like just polo neck shirts yeah. and jeans, like being sour fang or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they show it, and it's the, they've just used the exact movement, yeah. and it's brilliant, and it's so cool. And my favourite one was the bit they showed from Old Soldier, yeah. that scene where Zakan is running after sour fang, yeah. taking off his shoulder pads, yeah. and they just did it in the car park. <laughs> They just filmed it in the car park, and ah, oh, this epic, epic, um, oh and and he's just got literal foam blocks on yeah. his shoulders, and he's doing it, and he, the commitment yeah. that he is giving this performance yeah. is just wonderful, and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, it and I love the cinematics even more now. Yeah. It's so good. And they, they, they gave him these shoulder pads, because obviously they had to have him taking them off and yeah. dropping them down Dancing and stuff them, as yeah. they're walking yeah. along. Ah, yeah. oh, and it was so great. I yeah. loved it. I just, yeah. I, it was I know, such a great I know, panel. I know. So brilliant. So magical. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and um, so the, the, that was really interesting to see and to hear, and the idea that that's how they put the, the, the super realistic ones. But the thing that no one has, else has reported here, which is like our little tidbit that we noticed, was when Mark Messenger was talking about this, mm-hmm. he was ta- and because he, he, he works on these like hyper realistic uh, cinematics, which is becoming more and more popular. And he, he was talking about how they're becoming more popular with the team which and how great. he enjoys working yeah. on them. And he was like, um, and you know, with uh, um, the Battle of Azeroth trailer, and with uh, Old Soldier, and Lost Honor, and the project I'm working on now, oh, I think he said the one I'm working on now. So we know that there is another one of these in the works. And guess what, Avatel? What? I think I am going to be right about my grey main cinematic. It must be, right? Surely. It must and be. And you know what? That will just make it an even better prediction. I mean, they can't all be about Sarafang. Or I they should... probably could actually, couldn't they? Uh, yeah. I mean, they did show some snippets from, um, so the, the Lost Honor on one, when they're looking out over the harbor, showed these kind of like rendered um, models of Anduin like spinning around in like, yeah, different yeah. locations. There was one of Gen, which suggests that he would be used for something more than just in the background. And you know what? If they use, if it's the next one mm-hmm. that is Gen Grey Main, that's, I reckon that, that's an even bigger tick for my prediction. Yeah. Because the, the earlier you predict it, the better. So, I can see it. I can see it. Coming. There's still time to win on that one, <laughs> and I'm still confident. Then, oh. we went to the, then we went to the Q&A the next day, um, and uh, in, in this time there was like classic announcements um, and uh, the classic panel, yeah. and we're not going to talk too much about that here, but there was some really good news with classic, mm-hmm. and some very strange news as well, yeah. when it came to like sharding and um, item uh, loot, uh, loot yeah, options and things like mm-hmm. that, and, and, and loot trading. Mm. The sharding, as it was explained in the Q&A, uh, was it would be very limited and only at the very beginning when the game launches when it's clearly going to have four or five times as many players as it will have when it's kind of settled down mm-hmm. and I know that like not being able to log in and everything being laggy and shit kind of is the vanilla experience and I, I, I do kind of get that yeah but at the same time, I'm not against them sharding it at the very beginning just because mm-hmm. it means everyone's going to have a better gameplay experience. Yeah, yeah. And it's just not possible not to when you've got that many people logging on. Otherwise, the loot trading thing, I don't think they should do at all. I'm on the side of people that are like, don't do that. Because, yeah, yeah you just shouldn't. You should just keep it the way it was, yeah. no matter how bad it was. And then we went to the Q&A and we had just been up in the press area. Yeah. And we had just met Chris Metzen. Just uh, strolling in. Yeah, um, we were basically the first people that he bumped into in the doorway. <laughs> uh, and so we were introduced to him and he was so excited to meet us, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> Rightfully so. But, but we have shaken his hand and yeah, that's good. So that's and we said cool. thanks and that was awesome. Um, and then we went and took our places in the Q&A mm-hmm. and Evertel kind of nudges me as the first question was being read out by Ro from uh, well, uh, Realm Podcast. Yeah. Um, and she goes, Chris Metzen's in the queue. <laughs> 
I, I think he might have even been the first person to spot him because um, we were quite was, near the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he was like holding like, yeah, something and, he, and then you noticed people noticing him, and he started. Mm-hmm. He held the paper, and then yeah. they hurried him to the front of the yeah, yeah, front yeah. of the line. He had someone kind of, and he stole the show. And I have absolutely. never seen Chris Metzen in action because this is only our second BlizzCon. Exactly, we've never we've seen him seen come like in, like in real life. Never, yeah, yeah, exactly. We've never been in his aura, in his presence. Yeah, and it's true. And he totally has one. He's awesome. Yeah, he's brilliant, and he's great. He owned that room. Yeah, and. It's exactly what we'd be missing from the opening ceremony. Yeah, exactly. It was just that, like, kick of energy and excitement and just this, like, amazing atmosphere that he created. I mean, look at these people. They're all flipping out. And he just owned it. And he had the crowd eating out the the palm of his hand. And it was, like, the best possible start to the the Q&A. But an interesting little fact about his appearance here, it wasn't his idea. No. And it wasn't spur of the moment. And it wasn't Blizzard's idea either. No. It was it was Scott Johnson, the presenter. Yeah. Because uh, they're, they're really good mates. Yeah. Um, and he, like, when he found out he got the gig doing this, he called Chris Metzen and he was like, uh, well, Chris Metzen told him he was going to be there. Mm-hmm. And because they just, they always meet up and have like a drink or whatever. And he's like, hey, what time are you going to be here with your kids? Do you want to come right? down and ask a question? And he's like, yeah, that'd be fun, actually. Yeah. That'd be really, really cool. And then, of course, Blizzard has to like scramble to make Yeah, happen. exactly. Like, and like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a blessing and a curse for yeah. everyone there that yeah. day, I think, who was working there. Um, but what a star. What a legend so like brilliant a moment that will go down in blizzcon history oh yeah i think so that was awesome and um there were some really interesting questions asked at the q a we don't want to go into too much detail about yeah. it now but the star on that panel for me was a Avi, whose name i always say wrong i've said it wrong now i know that but i no, can't it's very oh good. was that good yeah okay awesome because he has got some sass man yeah when like because they've all got their resting bitch face when they're not being talked <laughs> Everyone to does. and they flash up on the screen Everyone's and like, like john height is just like permanently like this Ian is kind of permanently like this. Yeah. And Afraziavi is like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. He is like, you He just what? looks like he's always saying, you bitch, what? please. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when a question gets... Um, and, and the thing is, he has to handle like all the ridiculous law questions and things like that. And the inevitable question came, like, what is the difference between Sylvanas and Garrosh at this point? Yeah. And his answer was immense. Yeah. He was like, if I was Sylvanas, I'd probably be thinking... Garrosh was an amateur. And like the whole, oh mate, what an answer. What an answer. <laughs> and that got people so pumped. It because then, good. like all the next people who asked questions were like, yeah, uh, loyal Sylvanas follower here. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, and it was yeah, so great. Yeah. There was just such a really great atmosphere in the room. Yeah, um, after really that set answer. That up well. oh, it was so good. Yeah. And then when he he promised to fire the cannon on top of the Pleasure, uh, pleasure Palace, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and, uh, like he stole the, the entire panel yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, but um, Ian was also really great right at the very end of the panel. Mm-hmm. He um, said that all those, there was like 10 people left in the queue. Who yeah, a lot of people questions. didn't actually get to answer. Answer, um, or ask their questions. And, and Scott Johnson had like about 30 other questions on yeah. a list from the internet as well. Yeah. Uh, just couldn't get to because of the length of the panel. Uh, and Ian made a point of saying that they would be answering those questions uh, on the forums. Um, and not only that, but I, I also know that they have gone into the game and found the, the main character of the people in the queue and they will be answering those characters, yeah. which is like really cool. Image. And like, yeah, have them asking sweet. the questions yeah. and be like, which is yeah. awesome. Um, just a nice little touch, but uh, great. And it was when. Frazi uh, promised to fire the cannon yeah. that this amazing picture was taken hey! and we were found we were found there in we the crowd now, you might remember that on a previous episode of the weekly reset we set you the challenge of being the first to spot us in the crowd yeah. uh, and letting us know and this is the first one that came up in our notification on the virtual ticket uh, on the virtual ticket yes yeah, sorry not because like, loads of people found us in the yeah, crowd yeah, totally. um, but on the virtual ticket and here we are <laughs> live yeah. On, on blizzcon.com and as you can see I basically look like a two-faced model here it's fantastic yeah, you, yeah, I look yeah, excellent yeah, you what are you doing though Emma so it's shortly before this I'm laughing um, if you say so yeah 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 no if you go to the clip it's it's during the Q&A um, it, it's right after Alex Efrasiabi uh, says that you know the, the canon line and I'm like ha 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 and then because <laughs> that face is a face I've because seen many times. The, Don't get me wrong. That's the face. Sorry, that I was I was getting a bit cranky at the guy who was asking these questions, who was really really dragging it out. He was. So I he apologize. tried to be medicine, didn't he? He did he was a like, little bit. I just, I just want to say something right. for the horde, and everyone was like, oh, right. and it was the closest we ever got to someone booing someone at the Q and A. Exactly. Q&A. exactly. <laughs> and he was fine, but it was just like it was going on a bit, and you could see all the people who wanted to ask questions. So like, my yeah. my bitchy rest face um, kicked in pretty strong. I have seen I that face like, before. That's the face that happens when I'm like um, Evertel is it alright if I just take the recycling out tomorrow instead yeah exactly and you're like yeah fine yep 
That's good. So, dude, you crossed it. <laughs> that's a face Cameron you don't Lane. want at you, I promise. Oh, boy. Um, no, seriously. Um, <laughs> and that was pretty much our BlizzCon, because after that, we just chilled out and met people. I mean, there are tons and... of stuff in between, and yeah. us running around and catching things, and it, yeah. But these were kind of the big nuggets. All, all, that, all that remained was to go and watch Train. <laughs> Oh no, do you know what? Five minutes before the Q&A, we didn't watch Train, by the way, or anyone. Train. We went for our patron meetup. Yeah, we our did. Our secret it patron meetup, which I thought about 10 people would be at, but about 30 people were at. That's crazy. And we had to actually abandon the place we said we were going to be. And actually, the only place that could hold us all um, was the car park. Yeah, the, the Marriott, Marriott parking And we stood out there for hours talking to everyone. So sorry if you were a patron, you couldn't yeah. find us because you weren't in the place we were going to be. And thank I'm you sure guys for coming out to that. Um, but thank you to everyone that found us. And next year, we will do it properly and yeah, we'll we meet everyone. And we've learned a learning experience. Yeah. Um, but five minutes before the Q&A we did actually play some games yeah. which is wicked in the demo room in the press yeah. area because um, that's one of the that's one of the the, the perks of being press mm-hmm. is we could play WoW Classic and other games without a time limit mm-hmm. we could play it as much as we wanted mm-hmm. so we cracked our knuckles and we sat down to play WoW Classic how long mm-hmm. did you play it for Eddie? five minutes yeah if that even did you enjoy it? I hated it <laughs> I can hear the typing. I, I can hear the typing. Ah, no, no, because no, 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 you were no. you were new. Look, because look, you were look, a girl. Look. Girls I never, hate I never played classic. <laughs> you know what I did play? EverQuest. Right. Okay. So suck on that. That was like real, just straight up, like two polygons per character walking around on a polygon. Like that was really hardcore basic adventuring but i loved it so that game for me has all the nostalgia yeah fair like enough. that is what i kind of look back to and would want to replay in some way but trying to play wow which i only really know is like its modern version um as classic i was just like wow i killed one boar i didn't know how to find it i didn't even get to my actual quest in the end <laughs> because the te- quest text was scrolling yeah. and it I mean, it's cool. I will definitely go back and play it properly when we're not like on a time. Yeah, cut, totally. Basically. But um, yeah, how long did you play it for? Well, same as you, because I'd leave when you did. Well, yeah. And in fairness, <laughs> that, that five minute thing is a funny thing to say, but we had to get down to the queue. Yeah, we did. Well. We did so we did. like, we were in a bit of a rush. Yeah. But um, I, I really liked it. And I've always thought like, it's, it's one of those games that I, I will play. Mm-hmm. And I, will, I in my head, I'm going to level stuff to 60 and, and, and do yeah. the thing I want to do. Or 59. But, like, yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah, because, oh, that's the other thing we learned about Classic, Mm -hmm. that they will be staggering the release of uh, various things and raids, uh, which is what everyone wanted. And that's awesome. That's like really, really good. So, and I, that excites me. I'm I'm really into that idea and I think that's brilliant. And I, I, I will be playing it. Not as much as I play live, but it'll be that thing that I do when I'm a bit bored of live, and yeah. I know, you know, which happens. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, a more cerebral, slower experience. But I have to say that when I was there in Westfall, and all the stuff that I really like about it, the fact that there's no like arrows telling where the quests are, it was weird because I knew where I was going anyway. Yeah, of like, course. I didn't need the so arrows because I, I know those places like the back of my hand. Mm-hmm. And so it's not the same in yeah. a way because yeah. there isn't that sense of discovery. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, you have to go to the northwest to the syndicate base. And I was like, I yes. know where the syndicate base yeah, is, guys. I'm Don't good. worry. I know where I'm going. Yeah. Get back. Get back. And I thought like, mm, that, that's not giving me that experience because yeah. yeah. I know those maps yeah. so well. Yeah. To the extent where if I wanted to play a game where I had to like discover where I was going and really read the instructions mm-hmm. and like make, you know, mm-hmm. Maybe WoW Classic wouldn't be the game I did that with. It would be actually like a completely different MMO. Yeah. Like, because wow, I'm yeah. not sure WoW Classic can give me that discovery experience because I, no. I know all of those zones. That's a good point. So well. Yeah. Um, but anyway. anyway. Um, and that was low, the end of BlizzCon. Mm. And then Train were magnificent, and that was the end. <laughs> And then I stole the Jaina statue. Yeah. Oh my god, that Jaina oh. statue. Oh. It's the most beautiful I've ever seen. Oh, but this is the longest works. video in the entire world. Yes, it That is. was our BlizzCon. Yeah. That's what we thought of BlizzCon um, from a WoW perspective. Yeah. Um, I so, mean, there's tons of other yeah, stuff that um, maybe we'll talk about in a Patreon video. And I think in... Yeah, good idea. I think in summary, we were really happy with the What's Next panel. Mm-hmm. Really happy with the Q&A. Yeah. Um, and a lot of things that were said there. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it did what was needed. Maybe yes. not as well as it could have done. Yeah. But I got what I needed from that. Yeah, exactly. Which was, which I wasn't just feel like confident. jumping up and down and screaming and yeah. tearing up my clothes, but I was like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is not the last of our BlizzCon videos. No, it's not. But it is almost certainly the longest. <laughs> and if you're still here, 
congratulations, well done. Cameron Lane, we will be uh, getting in contact with you because we'll be sending you a prize. We did promise. We did. And we never said what that prize would be, but, but we'll get it to you, I swear. You. Um, thank you to everyone that we've bumped into at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all of the just amazing people that have found us and hugged us. Yeah. Like, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you, and yeah. uh, every single one of you has made us feel amazing. It's been and loved. such an incredible experience. It's been brilliant talking wow with you. Thank yeah. you to all the other creators mm -hmm. that have taken time to kind of chat with us and yeah. make us feel like loved and, 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 and wanted and, yeah. and, um, and accepted, yeah. uh, which is really good. Thank you to all of the staff and the devs that have uh, given us their time and, and the interview. Can't wait to get that dev interview out as yeah. well. Um, and thank you to you uh, for being in your house and watching us talk to you about it now. If you like this video, don't thank us, thank our patrons who give us their actual real life money to make these videos happen. And the best hugs and the best oh, chats yeah. and the best stories. Seriously. And like there's no one I would rather stand out in an Anaheim parking lot into the early hours of the morning than, than you guys. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember my name is Chris Metzen. Now no one will downvote. Exactly, everyone's gonna upvote it. <laughs> Be on the first video ever yes. with no downvotes. <laughs> Wait, no, that didn't work. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, my name is Taliesin. From me and me, Evertel. Until next time, cheerio.